Hey everyone, Jeff here again for Rhinoco Technology. Now, in the video surveillance industry, regardless of whether we're recording IP cameras or analog cameras or high definition analog cameras for that matter, we need to take the footage that's generated by these cameras and put it somewhere. So while there's a bit of a push in the PC industry, definitely to push towards solid state disks and certainly on, on cameras such as IP cameras like this one where we've got the option to add an SD card, we are recording to solid state media. For the most part in 2019, we are still recording to good old spinning platters. Now, obviously the type of hard disk here that we record to is very important. It's critical that you choose a surveillance grade hard disk if you are going to, uh, well, basically any NVR that you're inserting these into, regardless of whether that's PC based or standalone system. So choose a surveillance grade disk. Uh, at Rhino, we recommend Seagate Skyhawk drives, such as this one here. And on that note, there's been a fairly large change recently to the Skyhawk range. So you might notice here that I've got two 10 terabyte Skyhawk drives. Now, what Seagate have actually done is they've dropped the standard Skyhawk drive, okay? And they've replaced it in, its, in the line with the uh, AI version of the same drive, okay? So AI, a bit of a buzz term at the moment, uh, stands for artificial intelligence. And obviously in our industry, um, we're seeing quite a lot of you know, intelligent cameras, intelligent thing, things going on where we're detecting faces or detecting a car versus a person versus you know, trees waving in the background rather than just triggering events. Um, so obviously the industry is pushing in that direction. In the hard drive field, you might say, well, what's the difference? It's still a hard drive, it's still storing footage, right? But there are actually pretty significant differences between the AI based drives here and the regular drives. Now, why this is a big deal is because we've had the AI drives for a while, okay? But now the price has actually dropped down to be the same as the drive that it's replacing. This 10 terabyte drive right here, the original 10 terabyte drive. In this video, I'm gonna go over some differences between the drives and just sort of explain to you why um, this could help you quite a bit, okay, moving to these drives and basically we're getting it for free, right? The prices for the drives haven't gone up. But I can't emphasize enough, if you are installing any form of video recording device and you're recording that to hard disks, please make sure it is a surveillance grade disk, whether that be from Seagate, like we use at Rhino, or um, from Western Digital. Western Digital Purple Drives, um, they are also a good choice. Without further ado, let's cut across to our PC that we have here and I'll show you the drives. So, as you can see, this is the drive listed here and the Rhino part number's changed slightly, but that you shouldn't have to worry about. Um, going forward, these drives, like I said, will completely replace our standard drives. Now, some differences that I wanna point out, okay? For that, I'm just gonna go to the data sheet, which I have loaded up here. This is the standard Seagate Skyhawk surveillance drive, okay? This is the standard drive that I'm gonna show you first up. So just flicking through here, you can see, well, actually let's go from here to the other data sheet. So this is the Skyhawk data sheet that we have here. As you can see, Skyhawk AI. Now we have some key advantages. So image perfect AI firmware for superior image integrity alongside additional AI workload support and always on AI enabled surveillance systems. Now, what does that mean? Well. Um, Obviously what we're doing in an, in an AI instance, AI really just means deep learning, okay? So we're gonna take an image of something or um, we're gonna look at uh, an object and decide, hey, that's a car. We're gonna train the thing based on cars. And then this camera, every time it sees a car, it's gonna give you a notification. Or every time it sees my face versus your face, it's gonna give me a notification when it sees Jeff or it sees John, okay? So that's what we're talking about when we're doing deep learning. Um, deep learning does involve all the training process and even the searching, I suppose, involves quite a bit more um, reading from the drive than you would normally do, okay? So typically, if you think of a surveillance application, um, we're taking data from this IP camera all day long via this Cat5 cable here, we're then putting it somewhere. So we're writing, we're putting a lot of data onto the drives. Now typically, obviously surveillance drives are very, very optimized towards writing rather than reading, because think about it. Uh, you know, when you're viewing footage, for instance, um, how often does that happen? Maybe 10% of the time at worst. For the most part, we're just putting data on this drive all the time. Probably 1% of the time would be, you know, what you're actually gonna be reading. If you think about it though, if we're performing AI triggers based off the data that's being recorded on that drive and the NVR is doing it rather than a user manually going through and looking at footage, 
uh, we're going to be reading a lot more from it. So these drives are now optimized for, um, I believe it's a 50-50 split now between reading and writing. Okay, so it's, it's a bit closer, I suppose, more towards the enterprise drives than, than typically the Skyhawk drives used to be or the surveillance drives used to be. So let's go back and take another look at what we've got here. So custom to so designed to support an additional 32 AI streams while simultaneously and flawlessly recording video footage up to 64 HD cameras now. Previously on these drives, the earlier drives, we did still have the option of going up to 64 HD cameras. So that bit there is kind of unchanged, but we do also have the 32 AI streams. Now, what are AI streams? We're probably in this instance, um, when you think of an AI stream, like I said before, we're, we're taking images from these cameras typically, okay? So while a human might look at video, um, uh, a camera, or not so much a camera, I suppose, but when we're doing, when we're running an algorithm, uh, for deep learning, what we're actually looking at is sequentially, um, so we've got an image, and then we have another image, and then we have another image, and then we have another image. What we're looking at in each frame, okay, is for certain changes. So what's happening is our AI streams are actually snapshots from these cameras being recorded to the hard drive. So think of it that way. We've got up to 64 cameras being recorded all the time and snapshots from these cameras now being recorded to the drive, okay? So jump back across. What else do we have here? Design built to handle heavy surveillance workloads. Okay, I'll go over that a bit further in a, uh, just a bit. Advanced vibration management. Now we've had RV or rotational vibration sensors on the Skyhawk drives before. Now that's, that's actually something that's worthwhile saying. I mentioned earlier, you really need to choose a surveillance hard drive when you're fitting it into a, a surveillance machine, um, into an MVR or a DVR for that matter. The reason for that is because they have certain optimizations, um, including rotational vibration sensors. Now, if you think of um, having two drives next to each other, okay, if they're both spinning at the same time, what's gonna happen is that one is gonna vibrate and it's gonna affect the other drive. So they're gonna affect each other, really. They're both gonna be vibrating because they're spinning platters, okay, and they're gonna affect each other. The RV sensors um, or rotational vibration sensors, what they actually do is correct for that, okay? So they feel, or they sense the vibration in the drive through accelerometers, and then from that, they correct the vibrations. So a lot of this stuff here, other things here we've had before as well. So Skyhawk Health Management, that's been there previously. Um, improved reliability, now this is a big one. We've gone from um, 1 million MTBF, mean time between failure hours. Here we go, this is on the original Skyhawk drive to 1.5 million. So we've got 50% again on top of what the previous drives are. Essentially, this just means that the drives themselves are more reliable or they're built to be more reliable, physically more reliable. And I'll go into this a little bit further when we talk about um, our heavy surveillance workloads up here a bit later. What else do we have? We have our unparalleled data protection. Obviously, we've had our Seagate Rescue before. This is the option where you can pay to have a drive um, uh, you can pay insurance on a drive, I should say, basically to have data rescued within a two year period with the drive itself. So they're probably the, the biggest changes here. Um, but there's a few other things I wanna point out before I go back to the surveillance workloads thing. So if we just jump a bit further down into this data sheet here, you will see things like, where are we? Our maximum sustained transfer rate. Now, I did mention before that these drives were obviously designed to handle um, pushing and pulling AI streams in addition to our regular streams to the drive. So if you compare this 250 megabytes per second sustained transfer rate versus, if we jump down here, 210. So 210 megabytes a second versus 250 megabytes a second. So that might not seem like much, but it will certainly go a long way to getting that AI information or deep learning information on and off the drive if you are using that. What I want to probably go over though is probably more than that. Um, obviously, there's gonna be certain situations there'll be increasing an increasing number of situations in the future where we are going to need that information, the AI information stored to a drive. But right now, uh, even before we go down the AI path, even if you're not using intelligent cameras in any way, um, the thing that you really need to consider is our increase in maximum workload rate. Now, I'll just jump back. 
So the spec I'm interested in here is the workload rate limits or WRL. It's rated in terabytes per year. Okay, so you can see that this drive here, this is the original Skyhawk drive, has a workload rate limit of 180 terabytes per year. Now, it sounds like a lot, but let's compare it to the new AI drives. And you can see that this, the workload rate limit, again, has gone up to 550 terabytes per year. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, basically, this drive has approximately three times the amount of data that can be written and read, it must be said, from the drive per year, which just really gives us, uh, I suppose, overhead for different workloads. One thing I'd like to point out though, is that 180 terabytes a year, while like it sounds like quite a lot, is not actually that much. And it's, it's something that, that comes in, um, even when you're using a surveillance grade hard drive, okay, you really need to size the hard drive properly. So when I say size, most of the time people think, oh, well, you know, uh, as long as I choose enough hard drive capacity that I get the number of days recording that I want, we're good. Unfortunately, it's not quite that easy. So you've made the right step to start off with by picking a surveillance grade hard disk. Great, that's really good from a reliability point of view. However, we need to consider how much is being written and read from that drive per year. So I'm just gonna go over a quick sort of working here about it to compare our original original Skyhawk 10 terabyte drive and the standard Skyhawk drives for that matter, even the, the uh, any of the standard drives I should say. So the, the one terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte, four terabyte, uh, there is no five, six terabyte, eight terabyte and standard 10 terabyte drives or at least the old 10 terabyte drive. Um, I'm gonna show you just a, a brief indication of why that terabytes written per year thing is such a big deal moving to this new AI drive, okay, for the same price. So let's just jump back again to the PC and I'm going to show you a quick working for our workload rate limit. Okay, so as we said before, our standard drives are 180 terabytes per year, okay, written and read from the drive. But for this, we're just going to start looking at our written rate. So let's say I have a 16 channel recorder and I have 16 4 megapixel cameras on there and they're recording at six megabits per second. That's a fairly reasonable rate, I would suggest, for a four megapixel camera, let's say running at 20 frames a second, um, probably out of the box, that's, that's probably what the cameras are gonna be set to, assuming you don't go to variable bit rate or you don't reduce your bit rates. So that works out to be 96 megabits per second. Okay, so basically we're just going 16 times six gives you 96. 96 megabits per second gives us 12 megabytes per second. Okay, we're just converting from bits to bytes. Okay, so we're, essentially we're working at how much data we're going to actually use here. So 12 megabytes per second times 60 seconds gives us 720 megabytes per minute. And to work out what we're gonna use per hour, we multiply that by 60 minutes. So we're out to 43.2 gigabytes now per hour. 43.2 gigabytes per hour gives us 1.01 terabytes per day. So 24 times 43.2, 1.01 terabytes per day. Let's say we're happy with seven days of recorded footage. Okay, so as you can see, 1.01 terabytes per day times seven days. If we use a 10 terabyte drive, we'll be under the limit here. No problems at all. Great, so we'll record our seven days. Everything will be happy. However, when we multiply 1.01 terabytes per day, out to obviously times 365 days a year, we end up at 365 terabytes per year. Wow, that adds up fast. So is that good? No, we're at more than twice the limit, which is a problem. Even if we were to split this across two drives, we'd still be over the limit. And this only accounts for our rights to the disc. It does not account for any playback of footage. Okay, so any playback of footage, obviously we're gonna be drawing or we're gonna be pulling data from the drive. Um, even if it's a small amount, we're still already over. So from that calculation, I mean, you can kind of see just how quickly it adds up and how quickly we can go over the specification for this hard drive here. It's more than the, you know, obviously the biggest, I suppose, damage to these drives is, is typically when they're mishandled, right? But assuming you handle it properly, you can still run into issues like that where we're overworking the drive and it's not gonna last 
the time that it needs to, it's not going to last the length of you know, the life of the recorder basically. So we need to choose in that situation, we would choose, we need to use three drives, okay, to get under that limit. Now, let's say we're still great with seven days of recorded footage, we don't need any additional drives. We can just use the AI drive in its place. No problem at all, we've gone to 550 terabytes per year. As we mentioned earlier, uh, that's three times or more than three times um, or what the original drive was. So it really helps us out. Like I said, same price. These drives have been around for a while now, but the price has come down for the same price as the standard 10 terabyte drives and they're replacing the 10 terabyte drives. So I hope that that's been relatively um, straightforward indication of why, this, why it's now a big deal that we're moving to these AI drives. Um, even if we're not using AI features and cameras and things like that, the drive's um, capabilities are really gonna help going forward with reliability. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, there'll be plenty of other videos coming up shortly. Yeah, thanks for watching.